السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. حاك في بجن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So this is I believe fifth I think the fifth class I might be I think the fourth or fifth one of them but this will be it's all the second to last class in the series and then afterwards next week will be our final class. Uh, for the series in which uh, we have titled Who He Is Allah and we have been going over uh, various <coughs> verses in the Quran dealing with uh, the topic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his names and his attributes and his descriptions so we went over Surah Al-Fatiha uh, then we went over uh, Ayat Al-Kursi then verses, two verses from Surah Ali Imran and then uh, in the last session we covered some verses from Surah Al-Hashr specifically the, uh, the last uh, three verses from Surah Al-Hashr. Uh, so before we start today, inshallah, we're going to be uh, covering some verses from Surah Al-Hadid. Surah Al-Hadid. Before we start from uh, Surah Al-Hadid, let's have a little review of what we covered uh, last time. So in Surah, uh, surah Al-Hashr, at the end of the Surah, uh, starting with the verse, Wallahu alladhi la ilaha illahu alimul ghaybi wa shahada, until the end of the Surah, uh, we, we covered a number of names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? about maybe 15, 16 names. Um, starting with uh, Huwa Rahman Ar Rahim, we've covered that name multiple times before. Um, and then after that, uh, Al Malik, who can tell us what the name is, uh, the meaning of Al Malik, Al the king, Al Quddus? The holy or pure? Uh, pure. Okay. Al Malik Al Quddus Al Salam. Perfect. Uh, so the, the, the one, the, the source of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, Al Mu'min. Right. So the one who ins so we said that it doesn't really mean the believer, but the one who ins ins inspires faith, inspires belief, or the one who provides security. Mm -hmm. uh, Salam Al Mu'min Al Muhaymin. Guardian. Right. Protector. Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabir, Mighty Grand. Uh -huh. For these two particular names, we brought uh, up a doubt, a doubt that some of the enemies of Islam bring up, right? Where they said that these two names have negative meanings. So, what was the answer to that doubt? Anybody remember? Mm -hmm. Right, so Al-Jabbar, right, you can, if we, if we say, we call a human being Jabbar, what does that mean? We're calling him what? A tyrant, a tyrant all right, somebody who's, who forces people to do, do things. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it carries meaning of perfection, that Allah is the one, is irresistible, nobody can, uh, no one can challenge him, right, no one can challenge him, his power and his strength are beyond challenge. All right, same thing, Al-Mutakabbir, which means... If you, if you say that for a creation, it means what? Somebody who is arrogant, right? Somebody who is arrogant, prideful. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is, because he does not need to submit to anybody, he has the reason to be proud, all right? Allah has the reason to be proud because he is the one who, uh, by his nature, he cannot submit to anybody else. Um, <clears throat> هو الله الخالق، right الخالق، البارع، originator، المصور، fashioner، right. So we said that all three of these names they can be used interchangeably، but when they come together then they carry slightly different meanings. So الخالق refers to to what creating from nothing. This refers to the the the, the process before creation when Allah plans out the creation before even it happens. All right, uh, and al Badi is actually bringing that creation into existence, the actual of actually performing that creation. And Musawwir is, you know, basically the finishing touches, right? Finishing and designing and shaping, all right? And that, and that is the meaning of Al-Musawwir. Lahul Asma'ul Husna. We said Allah has the most beautiful of names. Is Allah limited to 99 names? All right, no. So, how many names does Allah have? Mm -hmm. The rest we don't know. 
Right? So how do we explain the hadith that Rasulullah says that Allah has 99 names or 100 names except for one? All right? Okay, special names. Or names that he has revealed to us, given to us. And how do we know that Allah has unlimited names or more than 99 names? He, we gave a, a proof for that. Mm -hmm. Dua. All right? Anybody knows that? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Right. Or that, and that last part is the part that we're looking for. Or you, you kept it hidden away. Uh, I ask you, oh Allah, by every name that you have, that either you sent it down in one of your revealed books, or you taught it to one of your slaves, all right? um, <clears throat> or you, um, you kept it to yourself. You, you kept it to yourself and you did not reveal it to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's another, that's another point that could be brought up too as well Is that if you actually gather all the names That's found in the Quran and the Sunnah They actually end up being more than They can be, end up being more than 99 And then we also mentioned that the list that's usually given It, it has uh, It doesn't include some names that we can also include as names as well right? And it also includes names that we would Some of the scholars have said that actually should not be names Considered to be names of Allah So uh, based on that, uh, we had mentioned that hadith that mentions all the 99 names listed is actually not an authentic hadith uh, where it's listed all 99 names. It is actually uh, a uh, ijtihad from some of the scholars who, who attempted to list out the 99 names, but it is not from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what are the actually 99 names? Allahu A'lam. But we know, we, we know the majority of them, but to, to highlight and pinpoint, these are the 99 names. We don't have a specific uh, authentic hadith that actually says that, list them all out. But there are weak hadith or uh, other hadith uh, or other statements from scholars that attempt to, to gather them together. It's weak. Well, weak means that it's not authentic. Authentic means that we can, we can fairly, we are fairly certain that it, it can be traced back to Rasulullah So there's, there's Sahih, right, which is, or Hassan, which is authentic. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can say that this is from Rasulullah Then there's fabricated, we can say this is not from Rasulullah And then there's weak, which is, we don't, we're not sure. Right? It could be, but we can't, we can't confirm it. So because we can't confirm it, we can't say it's from him. Right? Unless we can confirm that it's from him, then we can't say that he, he definitely said this. We, we can say there's a possibility that this is, it might have came from him, but we can't say that this is from him, like we can say for uh, authentic hadith. All right, uh, moving on to Surah Al-Hadid. So we're going to cover the first uh, six verses of Surah Al-Hadid. Um, does anybody know how the Surah starts? If you have a Musaf, okay. Okay, Sabbaha Lillah, which is, what do we call that? Tasbih. Uh, what is the meaning of Tasbih? When we say Subhanallah, what does that mean? Glorification, okay. What are we glorifying Allah? Specifically, right. So glorifying Allah uh, due to His perfection, due to His perfection. So they say that a uh, tasbih is tanzi. It is to elevate Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, from all types of deficiencies or imperfections. Tanzi Allah Taala an kulli naqsin, right? And an any type of deficiency or any type of imperfection. We, when we say subhanAllah, we're essentially saying that Allah is perfect and is free from any type of imperfection. All right, next question. How many... So this surah is one of what we call al-musabbihat. All right, musabbihat, which begin with either sabbaha lillah or yusabbihu lillah. So there's a group of surahs. This, they are in the, uh, the 28th. And then also, this is what sort of, uh, sort of hadith is in which uh, juz? 27. Right? So we have a group of surahs that are in the 28th juz and the 27 juz. And uh, they all begin with either sabbaha lillah or yusabbihu lillah. And they're called al musabbihat. Anybody knows how many of they are? They are? Five. Good. Okay. What are they? Okay. So we have hadid, which is the surah we're on. Uh, hadid Juma, uh huh. 
we'll get to that just now. But we're talking about the ones that are in this class of surahs. Not Mujadila. Surah Saf. All right. Taghabun. One more. We covered the surah um, last week. Hashar. Hashar. Right? So five of them. All right. So five are what we call Al Musabbihat. They begin with either Yusabbihu Lillah or Sabbaha Lillah. And there are, in the, most of them are in the 28th Jews, and Surah Hadid is in the 27th Jews. But they're all in fairly grouped together. All right, so that brings us to the next point. So this is what we call Al-Musabbihat. Those surahs begin either with Sabbaha Lillah or Yusabbihu Lillah. All right, more general than that, surahs that begin with Tasbih in general. How many are they? Okay. And Isra. Right? So those two. So that completes all of the surahs that begin with tasbih in some type of form or the other. All right? So you have Isra, and then you have the Al Musabbihat, the five we just mentioned, and then you have Surah Al A'la, which also begins with tasbih. Now, out of these surahs, they all have different uh, forms of tasbih. So they have uh, in the noun form. And that is one surah, which is, that begins with a noun. The rest are verbs. All right, so surah al-isra begins with a noun, the masla, the verbal noun. Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi. All right, so that begins with a noun. The rest of them are verbs. Now, the verbs are three categories. You have the verbs that are past tense. Sabbaha lillah. All right, it begins in the past tense. Uh, and they are? Hadid. All right, uh, hashr and saf, so to saf. All right, then you have the present tense, which are juma and taghabun, yusabbihu lillah, and the command, which is surat al-a'la, sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la, command, all right, make tasbih. So we have all the forms there, right, the noun, then the past tense, the present tense, command tense. What does this tell us? That... Creation has been making tasbih of Allah in the past, in the present. They will continue to make tasbih of Allah in the future. Everything makes tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِمِّنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ Everything makes tas uh, tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you don't understand the tasbih of all the rest of the creation. So for human beings, we make tasbih by saying subhanAllah. Or the trees make tasbih in their own way and the, the mountains and the wind. Everything, where Allah says in the Quran, everything makes tasbih. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you don't understand the, the way they make the, the creations, other creations make tasbih. Alright, so the, we'll go over the first three verses first. سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ وَالْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Whatever is in the heavens and the earth exalts Allah, makes tasbih of Allah. And He is the exalted in might, the wise. Uh, he is the dominion, or He has dominion over the, uh, of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and causes death. And He is over all things competent or able. He is the first and the last, the ascendant and the intimate. Uh, and He is of all things knowing. Alright, as we mentioned, tasbih means to glorify Allah above any uh, imperfection or deficiency. When we say subhanAllah, we are essentially saying that Allah, you are uh, perfect and you have no deficiencies, you have no imperfections. Uh, this surah begins with tasbih. Alright, uh, and the surah before it, surah waqiyah, it ends with tasbih. What is the last verse of surah waqiyah? Fasabbih, fasabbih, what was it? فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ Alright? فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ Yeah. Alright, so Surah Al-Waqiyah ends with Tasbih and then Surah Al-Hadid begins with uh, Tasbih. As we said, Al-Hadid is one of the Al-Musabbihat. Alright, five surahs. Al-Hadid, Al-Hashr, Al-Saf, Al-Jum'ah, Al-Taghabun. Alright, these five, they're called Al-Musabbihat. And uh, in total, seven surahs begin with Tasbih using different forms. So we have Surah Al-Isra beginning with the verbal noun. Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi. Past tense, uh, Surah Al-Hadid, 
So to Hashr and so to Saf all begin with the past tense, Sabbaha lillah, right? Which, is, which means essentially that uh, everything in the heavens and earth has made tasbih of Allah, has glorified Allah in the past tense. Present tense, Surah Al-Jum'ah and Surah Al-Taghab and they begin with Yusabbihu lillah, this is the, the present tense. Uh, that everything in the heavens and the earth, they are currently and continuously uh, glorifying Allah. And Surah Al-A'la has the command beginning with Sabbih, Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la, make tasbih, glorify your Lord. Al-A'la, the one who is the most high. Alright, uh, after that. Uh, Allah ends the verse, the verse number one, Al-Aziz Al-Hakib. We had mentioned these, these, these two names before in the previous uh, uh, session. These were also in Surah Al-Hashr at the end. Wahu Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. Right? So Al-Aziz, the mighty, the powerful. Al-Hakim, the, the, the wise. Right? And we had mentioned this before that when these two names come together, they create a unique meaning. And that Allah is all powerful, but at the same time, He's all wise. So sometimes you might find creation that they have power, but they don't have any wisdom. Right, or the opposite, they might have wisdom, but they don't have any power to do anything. Allah combines both together. He has the power, and He has the wisdom, and it also tells us that, uh, as opposed to what is very common in creation, whenever creation gets a little bit of power, then you find that the wisdom kind of goes down. Right? The power increases, and then the wisdom kind of goes down. They start to act uh, oppressively, start to think highly of themselves, and they are affected by power. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's al-aziz, he has all the power, but he's also al-hakim, the, 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 the wise, the all-wise. And so he's not affected by power, his power does not cause him to become unjust or oppressive. Alright, uh, then Allah says, yuhyi wa yumit. He gives life, I mean, he gives life to something that is lifeless, that previously did, did not have any life. He gives death, what you, what you meet, meaning the power to remove life from a living creature without a necessary intervention, intervention of an apparent cause. All right, now we know the story of Ibrahim السلام, with the king Nimrud. All right, this is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Ibrahim السلام, he is debating with the king and he says, Rabbi الذي يحي wa meet. My Lord is the one who gives life and death. And the king, what did he say? Qala ana uhi wa umit. He says, I give, what are you talking about? I give life and I give death. And then he brought two people and he killed one of them and he let the other one live. And he said, look, see, I give life and I give death. So is this giving life and death? No. All right. Uh, so giving life and death meaning <clears throat> actually uh, Allah is the one who has that power to give life Meaning, you know, put the soul into, into the body, right, for a human being. Put the soul into the body. Uh, giving death, meaning taking that soul away, removing the causes of, uh, of life. Right, it's not a merely a means, uh, meaning <clears throat> to uh, letting somebody live or killing somebody. That's not what it's meant by giving life or death. So this, this man, this disbelieving this king, he said that, uh, I give life and I give death. But Ibrahim, السلام, he could have explained to him, you know, this is not what it's meant, but he did not. Uh, and this is for wisdom of, of debate. He maybe didn't want to uh, be tied up with uh, arguing over a point uh, with somebody who is clearly doesn't you know, understand. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he moved to a different point. He said, Rabbi al-Qala ana uhi wa umid, qala fa inna Allah yati bi shamsi min al-mashriq, fa'ati biha min al-maghrib. So Ibrahim alayhi salam said, okay, you claim that you'll give life and death. Okay, we're not going to argue with you on that point. Let's leave that aside for now, even though, of course, that's completely wrong. He doesn't give life or death. But Ibrahim السلام, brought something else that there's no way he could even try to, to say that he does this. My Lord is the one who brings the, the sun uh, from, the, uh, from the east. Right? So why don't you bring it from the west? فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي kafar. And the, the disbelieving person became dumbfounded. He had no, had no answer. And this was a debate strategy of Ibrahim السلام, Instead of sticking on a point that uh, you know you might end up being bogged down and arguing with this person for 10-15 minutes bring a different point not that he's conceding the first point but the next point this, this man is not going to be able to respond at all and so he was dumbfounded he couldn't say anything and Ibrahim السلام, was able to uh, shut the guy up shut him up all right? he couldn't say anything else after that 
So Allah gives life and He gives death. Not in the meaning of what King Nimud said, which is that uh, I give life meaning I let this person live, and I give death meaning I kill this person. That's not what is meant by uh, giving life or death. Yuhyu yumit wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, and He is uh, He has power over all things. I just mentioned Surah uh, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and Nimrud. Uh, then the next verse, huwa al awwalu wal akhiru wa zahiru wal batinu. Allah is al awwal. Al awwal means the first, meaning there is nothing, nothing came before Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right? Allah has always been there, and He was all. He will always continue to be there, and He has always existed. Right? Allah has always existed, and He was there before anything else. Every single creation has a beginning. Right? Every single creation, at one point, did not exist, and it came into existence. Right? Whether that's the throne of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Whether it's the angels, uh, any, uh, any other creation, the pen, which Allah says the first thing He created was the pen in the hadith, first of all, says in the hadith, the first thing Allah created was the pen. Any creation, ha every creation has a beginning, must have a beginning. There's no th nothing that existed pre, uh, pre eternally, that has always existed, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's nothing before Allah. Now, this is something that is, um, uh, it can, when you start to think about it, you can you end up getting you can end up confusing yourself, right? How could uh, billions and trillions? You can't even put a number on it, right? We can't put a number. We're not going to say billions of years. We're not going to say trillions. These numbers don't apply, all right? But if somebody's going to start to think, you know, does that mean trillions of years? What comes after trillions? Allah has always been there. You know, you can't even begin to imagine uh, this concept of Allah always existing, and this is why uh, Rasulullah Sallam advised that you don't dwell too much on these things. And that the shaitan will want you to dwell on these things. Right? There's a hadith in which uh, Allah's Messenger وسلم, says that the shaitan, he's going to come to one of you and he's going to say, he's going to start asking, you know, maybe seemingly innocent questions. Who created so-and-so? Who created this? Who created that? All right? And the answer, of course, is going to be Allah. But then he's going to try to lead you further on until he asks the question, who created your Lord? Right? What, what, what was there before Allah? Who created your Lord? So when this, these kind of questions start to come up, then Rasulullah says that you should seek refuge in Allah and give up such thoughts. Right? So at that point, this is, we're coming to the point where human, uh, the human mind can't really perceive these type of concepts of Allah always existing and pre-eternally. And we can't, we can't, uh, these, these concepts go beyond our, uh, our imagination. So when the shaitan comes and he starts asking these questions, then at that point, seek refuge in Allah. Because the shaitan is trying to plant doubts. Are you trying to plant doubts to say that, well, everything has to have a beginning? So that means that even Allah has a beginning, and then you, know, you, go, to that, you go down that uh, path, and then he starts to plant doubts and so on. So when it comes to that point, then seek refuge in Allah and give up such thoughts. Because this is the shaitan trying to plant doubts into uh, a person's mind. So Allah is al awwal, nothing was before him, he is the first. Nothing before him. Every creation has a beginning. Everything, every creation must have a beginning. And Allah is Al-Akhir. He will always continue to exist. He will never be destroyed. He will never go away. He will always continue to exist. He was the first and he is the last. Now there's a doubt that uh, is brought up, which is that, all right, we, we understand Allah is the first. Nothing was before him. All right? Allah has always existed. All right? that, that's, a, that's a fairly uh, understood point. But the other point, which is that Allah will always continue to exist. The doubt that is brought up is that, well, there are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will also always continue to exist. Don't we say that Jannah and Jahannam are forever? Don't we say that when, you, when the believers enter Jannah, they will li live therein forever? Meaning they will never come to an end? Don't we say that when the disbelievers enter the fire, they will khalidina fiha, they will dwell therein forever? All right. Don't we say that the people of paradise and the people of hellfire will be there forever? They will never die. In the hadith it comes that uh, Allah will bring a ram in front of the people. And you place it between the people of the, the fire and the people of uh, paradise. And you will say that this is death. This is death, and it will be sacrificed, and then it will be said that, Ya Ahl Jannah, khuludun la maut. 
Oh, people of paradise, live forever, no more death. And it will be said the same thing to the people of hellfire. Ya ahlan nar, khuludun la maut. Live forever, no more death. So don't we say that the people of paradise will live forever? And don't we say that the people of Jahannam will live forever? And paradise will continue on forever and ever and ever. And Jahannam, hellfire will continue on forever and ever and ever. Right? So we have this concept that we believe in this. But yet Allah says He is the last. Meaning He will always continue to exist. But then we are also saying that we have creations that also continue to exist. So this doubt, uh, some people got carried away, carried away with it. To the point where some of them denied that Jannah and Jahannam will be forever. So we have a person called Jahm ibn Safwan, and he is one of the heads of one of the major deviant uh, past uh, groups. Right? One of the major deviant groups, they're called al Jahmiyyah. Right? They are called al Jahmiyyah, and their founder is a man by the name of Jahm ibn Safwan. So he, you know, he became obsessed with this idea. Right? Uh, you know, Allah is al Akhir. Allah is the one, he's, he's, he, he will never cease to exist. Allah will always continue to exist. That means that no other creation can compete with Allah in that. So by necessity, that means that Jannah and Jahannam must come to an end. And so he began to preach this belief that Jannah and Jahannam will come to an end. It will, it's not forever. All right, this was his idea. Amongst many, he had many different beliefs. This was a, a, amongst them. He was also a person who denied Allah's attributes. Allah has no attributes. Because if we say Allah's attributes in it, then it means that this and this and this. And so he, he went down this path as well. So he said that Jannah and Jahannam, they're going to come to an end. Because only Allah can remain forever. No other creation can remain forever. Alright, so this is the doubt he brought. Uh, what is the response to that doubt? What is the response to that doubt? We say that Allah is Al-Akhir. That Allah has the quality of Al-Baqa. Meaning that He will always continue to exist. But we are also saying that we have creations that are continue, will continue and remain forever. Jannah and Jahannam and the people, inhabitants of Jahann Jannah and Jahannam, angels and so on. Okay. Good, exactly, right? So it essentially comes down to what is causing Jannah and Jahannam to continue to exist forever? Is it something in their nature? Or is it outside, external? All right? They are existing by Allah's permission. But if Allah wanted, He could end it. Right? Allah can end Jahannam and Jannah and the people of Jahan Jannah and Jahannam. Right? So they are, yes, we say that Jahan Jannah and Jahannam will continue to exist forever. However, they are existing not of something that is innate to, 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 to these creations, but it is external. It, it's depending on Allah's will. And so that's the, that's the difference, right? That is essentially the difference. All right, so everything besides Allah has the inherent, inherent capacity to perish. All right, does Allah have the capacity to perish? No, not at all, ever. Does Jannah have the capacity to perish? Can Allah destroy it if He wants and cause it to be non existent? Yes. Can Jahannam be, uh, have the inherent capacity to perish? Yes, Allah can destroy it. And the people of paradise and the people of, of hellfire. All right? So all of these things, even if we say there are certain creations that will continue on and on forever and ever, but it is not inherent to that, they don't have an inherent nature of being, uh, going on forever. It is only by Allah's will that they are staying on forever. However, as for Allah, then Allah does not, uh, this does not apply to Allah. Allah can never, كل شَيْءٍ هَارِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَ Everything will perish or has the capacity to perish. Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright, so we do say that there are creations that will, will always uh, remain. And, and this is, of course, from the, the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. That hellfire will be forever. Alright, uh, paradise will be forever. And it doesn't contradict the fact that Allah is the only one who is, uh, He's the last, Al Akhir, He's the one who can never uh, perish because this is part of Allah's innate nature that Allah is, can never perish. But these creations, they can perish if Allah chooses so.
Yes, so Allah has promised, made these promises in the Quran, right? And in Allah, la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah does not break his promise. All right, so um, to say otherwise would be insinuating that Allah is not being right, truthful or he's not fulfilling his promise, and this is not possible. All right, so, uh, but as we said, these are promises, but we believe them because Allah has promised that, that the people of paradise will live and be there forever. The people of Jahannam will be there forever based on that. Not because the nature of these people is that they can remain forever, right? Um, they have, as we said, they have the capacity to perish. They have the capacity to perish, but it is Allah Azza wa who is allowing them and willing that they will remain forever, right? But if He wants, of course, He can, He can destroy it and He can remove them. So you're asking, uh, were there, uh, are there, is it possible there were creations before what we know of? Possibly, possibly, possibly. Um, <clears throat> but the standard belief of Ahl Sunnah is that uh, everything had a beginning, all right? And there was a point where nothing existed, existed besides Allah, all right? Um, so this is the standard belief that we believe that uh, everything has a beginning. Now, what was the... What was uh, the first? There's there some hadith that mentioned the pen, some hadith mentioned the throne. Maybe there were creations before that. Allahu A'lam. But we know for sure that everything had a beginning. That there was nothing that was there eternally with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright, so is it possible? Now, there is a, you know, there is also um, a minority view. And this, uh, this is a bit, it's a bit more technical. But this is a position that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, he actually advocated which is that he, 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 he advocates that, yes, every creation has a beginning, but he also said that Allah has always been creating. Allah has always been creating. So there is a creation, and there is a creation before that, and there is a creation before that, and there is infinite regress. And he had that position. Uh, but the standard position is that actually there was a first. Allah was there before anything else, and there was a point where there was nothing. And it was only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, um, but this, this, is, this, this has been mentioned as well, that, that position. That Allah has always been creating, all right, perpetually in, in, in the past, but that every single creation itself, by, uh, on its own, had a beginning. Right? Nobody denies that. Nobody denies that every single creation, whether it's the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, uh, the angels, anything, it had a beginning. At one point, it did not exist, and it came into existence. And uh, the, the scholars have mentioned as well that uh, Allah's name Al-Khaliq, it applied even when there was no creation. Uh, right? uh, Imam Al-Tahawi mentioned that in his, in his creed. That he has, he has the name of Al-Khaliq even when there was no creation. He's still to be described as Al-Khaliq, the creator. Even when there was no creation. All right? So Allah is the first, meaning that nothing else came before him. Every creation had a beginning. All right? Every creation had a beginning. Allah Allah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, well it comes back to what we said uh, That uh, Everything else, even though they might Continue to exist, they don't have that inherent capacity Right, to To, uh, to, to remain And they can be, uh, they can perish According to Allah's will 
a lot. Of course, these are discussions, they, they can go very, you know, philosophical and technical, but we want to try to keep it that. Uh, as I said, right, the, the hadith of when the shaitan comes and he starts to ask these questions, and then people start to get caught up in these discussions, and then it leads to somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not a story. It was a hadith, though. Um, I don't know if that's a. Yeah, well, uh, the sh so the question is um, right, the, same the throne. Thing. So now you ask somebody, you know, I already said on the radio, Shaitan's throne now is over the water. No, not over the water. The, the Shaitan's throne is, I think the hadith is, he's, he has a throne in the water. In like the water. In or at the bottom. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Not over the water. Oh, okay. So in the water. Yeah, yeah that, that is in the Quran. Uh, وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ That his, his throne was over the water. Yeah, that, yeah, that is in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, it's in the Quran. <clears throat> That's a hadith. Yeah, that he has, um, he has a throne in the water. Yeah, and then everybody reports to him. Basically, all the all the devils they go and they report to him, right? This this is the iblis, the big devil, right? The the, the major devil. He has he has he doesn't you know, uh, he he has people doing. He has his his shayateen doing the work for him, right? He's not he's Sometimes we get the idea that, we, or people have this idea, the idea that uh, Iblis is like he can be everywhere. He's one person, right? He's the one person. He doesn't have uh, knowledge of everything. He, doesn't, he can't uh, be a, 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 multiple places at one time. He's one person, one individual. Uh, but when we're talking about the shayateen, he has an army of, of devils, right, who, who help him. From human beings and from jinn as well. The shaitan is in Iblis, the... the that, that one individual, he's not, he, he's not omnipotent. He doesn't have uh, that uh, ability to be uh, multiple places at one time. He's one person. But there's, when we say the shaitan, we can either be talking about the shaitan, Iblis, right? He's one person. He's somewhere, right? Where in the, in the water he has his throne. Or you're talking about shaitan as in the a devil, a devil, right? Which is everybody has their own uh, devil that's with them. And they're, of course, every, uh, spread out all over the place. Of course, no, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, of course, no, the, uh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the grandness of all creation. Just like how you have kings have thrones in, uh, you know, in this life, the, the shaitan has his own throne, but there's no comparison in terms of uh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared to, and the verse is going to come afterwards about Allah's throne, it comes um, first four or five afterwards. Uh, from what I know, it's authentic hadith, but we can uh, double check it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Allah is Al Awal, He is Al Akhir, Al Zahir. Al Zahir means manifest, superior. All right, it sig signifies a being whose manifestation is superior to everything. Right? Essentially, Allah is superior to everything else. Uh, Al Baltin is, it means hidden. All right, hidden. Or some people interpret it to mean closest. Uh, meaning that Allah is the one who cannot be perceived by eyes, right? We cannot, uh, uh, we cannot in this life at least, we cannot perceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with our eyes, and the heart cannot comprehend Him, right? The heart cannot comprehend the nature of His essence. We'll, we'll get to that point a little bit later on, about the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, uh, uh, but we can't uh, begin to understand the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's beyond our uh, imagination, right? Beyond what we can imagine. And this is why we always refer back to the verse that there is nothing like him. There is no one, there's nothing like him. Wahu is Samir al Basir, and he is the uh, all hearing, the all seeing. So Allah is al Baltin, meaning he, he, he cannot be perceived by eyes, or the heart cannot comprehend him. The heart cannot comprehend his nature. And the scholars have mentioned that when it comes to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything you can think of, that's not Allah. Right? It's a simple kind of formula, which is that when you're thinking about the nature of Allah's essence, anything you can think of, that is. Allah is not like that, right? So it's basically beyond our, uh, what our human minds can comprehend. 
So anything you can think of, you know, you know, colors, size, anything you can think of, Allah is not that. Right? There's nothing like him. Laysa ka mithlihi shay wa huwa samiyu al-basir. There is nothing like him. So to know, um, you, yeah, the verse, are you talking about the verse? Allahu nuru samawati wal ar? Ayatul Nur, yeah. I, yeah, that's, um, that, requ that verse requires its own class, I think, as well. Our entire session. I was going to actually do that one too as well, but, um, it would have taken a bit longer. That maybe a future session, inshallah. Um, and then the verse all talks about Allah's knowledge as well. <clears throat> um, so at the end of the verse, which verse are we on? Yeah. Uh, الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم. Right, and he is uh, he is over all things. Uh, he has knowledge over all things. Um, Right? Allah's knowledge encompasses everything. So Allah knows right, everything that happens. That happened, that will happen, right, that is happening. Allah knows what did not happen, had it happened, how would it have happened. All right? So everything. All right? What happened in the past, what is happening now, what happened in the future. What did not happen, if it would have happened, how would it have happened. Allah, uh, all this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. The knowledge encompasses everything. Uh, verse 44 to 6. Who will the who will the Khalaka Samawati will order if ayam? Come is um, okay. Thumma stawa ala al arsh, ya alamu maya did you fill all the way maya jumina, where maya yanzi lumina sema, you are maya aru fiha, where who are maracum, aina kuntum, while law who be mata maluna basir. The Humunko Samawati will old, where ill law he told you all umur, you did you lay the finna hari, where you did you nahar of a lay, where who are dimum be that is sudur. It is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days. And then establish himself above the throne. He knows what penetrates into the earth and what emerges from it, and what descends from the heaven and what ascends therein. And he is with you wherever you are. And Allah of, of what you do is seeing. He is the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and to Allah are returned all matters. He causes the night to enter the day, and causes the day to enter the night, and he is knowing of that which that which, uh, that within the breast. All right, so the first thing Allah talks about here is the creation of the heavens and the days and the earth in six days. And this is something that's shared uh, with also Jews and Christians. They also have this concept of creating uh, in six days. Although as, 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 as Muslims and what Allah tells us in other places in the Quran, what Allah means by, means by day is not what we commonly refer to as day. Uh, in one verse Allah says that a day with your Lord is equivalent to a thousand, uh, what you consider a thousand, uh, a thousand years. All right? And even that number a thousand is not meant to be taken literally. All right? It's not meant to be taken literally. Meaning that what Allah considers a day is a long period of time. However long that is, only Allah knows. So when we say days, it's not, it's not the 24 hour period that we, you know, we are, that we are uh, when we think of the day, that's what it means. Uh, Allah is referring to something, a time period. Right? He created the heavens and the earth in six days, meaning six periods of time. Right? How, how long each of those days are, we don't know. Right? It could have been thousands of years. You know, Allah knows best. Um, now, does this contradict what is mentioned in Surah Fussilat? Right? If, you look, if you look at Surah Fussilat, um, and let's look at the verses here. In Surah Fussilat, Allah talks about the creation of the heavens and the earth. I think this might be the last point afterwards. We will have to maybe continue this in, in next week. In Surah Fussilat, Allah says, قُلْ أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَكْفُرُونَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وَتَجَعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادَ ذَلِكَ وَرَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Do you disbelieve? Say, do you indeed, indeed disbelieve in he who created the earth in two days? An attribute to him equals, that is, the Lord of the worlds. وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ مِنْ فَوْقِهَا وَبَارُكَ فِيهَا وَقَدَّرَ فِيهَا أَرْبَعَةِ أَيَّامٍ سَوَاءَ لِلسَّائِلِينَ Then Allah says that He placed on the earth firmly set mountains over its surface and He blessed it and determined therein its creatures sustenance in four days without distinction for information of those who ask. 
ثم استوى إلى السماء وهي دخان فقال لها وللأرض اتيا طوعا أو كرها قال تأتينا طاعين then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke and said to it and the earth come willingly or by compulsion they, they said we have come willingly فقضاهن سبع سماوات في يومين وأوحى في كل سماء أمرها وزين السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وحفظة ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم and he completed them as seven heavens within two days and inspired in each heaven its command and we adorn the nearest heaven with lamps and as protection that is the determination of the exalted in might the knowing all right let's do some basic math here what what is the number we get when you count what is mentioned here in these verses from surah fusilat first he says two days then four days then two days how much is that eight but then Allah says He created in Surah Al Hadid and other places in the Quran, Fi Sittati Ayam, in six days. Is this a contradiction? This is, this, by the way, this is one of the uh, verses that the enemies of Islam, they, they always bring these verses. They say, look, the Quran contradicts itself. In one place, the Quran says, Heavens and earth created in eight days. In another place, it says six days. So they always bring up verses like this. So we should actually be aware of verses like this. In case somebody comes and try, they try to, you know, um, argue with you and they try to claim contradictions in the Quran, we should be able to respond. All right, by looking at the verses, anybody have um, a response? Hmm? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is essentially it, yeah. Right, yeah. Essentially what he's saying too, which is that um, that the first two here, so uh, uh, the first verse says in two days, created earth in two days, <coughs> and then he placed the earth uh, on, on the earth mountains over the surface, right, and blessed and determined therein the sustenance in four days. The answer is essentially that these are not six days in total. Rather, these, the first two days are included in that four days that come after. All right? So Allah, is, He created the earth in two days, and then in another two days, He put the mountains and He placed the sustenance and all the other, and, and finished off the creation of the earth in another two days, for a total of four days, all right? So this is not, so the two days mentioned in surah, uh, verse number nine, and, verse, and in four days in number, verse number 10, they're not, uh, they're not meant to be uh, taken as separate. The two days is also included in that four days, all right? So it's still four days in total. And then the, the remaining two days are for the heavens. And then he completed in verse 12, and he completed them as seven heavens, Within two days, it gives us the six days. All right, and it's very similar to what you mentioned. Um, the scholars have mentioned. Um, all right, uh, we'll get the statement afterwards. So the four days mentioned in the middle include the first two days also. All right, so Allah says that He created the earth in two days, and then He put the mountains and He did uh, place other things on the earth in four days. But that four days includes also the two days that He used to create the, the heavens, uh, the, the earth, the earth. All right, so it's like saying. I set out from Basra to Baghdad in 10 days and Kufa in 15 days. Is that 25 days? No, it is 15 days. So 10 days from Basra to Baghdad and then uh, from, ba from Baghdad to Kufa will be five days. In total, that's 15 days. All right, but it's not, uh, but that, that 10 is included in the 15. All right, so that two to create the earth is included in the four, which is mentioning the creation of the earth and then placing everything else on the earth, the mountains and so on. Yeah, yeah as we said, the days, it's not, it's not the 24-hour days because of course this is before the sun existed. Right? When we say 24-hour days, this is based on the sun going, rising and, and setting. Right? But if Allah, is, this is creating bef this, uh, before the sun and before the earth is spinning and everything like that. So this is not obviously, this is not talking about the 24-hour day. This is talking about a day with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in another verse Allah says, ka'al fi sanatin. It is like a thousand years. 
All right? And even, as I said, the number 1,000 is not meant to be literally, meaning that it is a day in, your, in the sight of your Lord is like a, a lot of years, what we would consider it to be. All right? how, how much that is, we don't know. All right? We don't know. All right, and this would, um, you know, this would also more be in, more in line with, you know, what um, what modern science would say that the, the creation uh, and the earth forming would, would happen over, you know, not just uh, thousands but you know millions of years, and this this can be um, the the Quran doesn't contradict that if, because we are saying that uh, the day does not mean 24 hours, but the day means a, a certain amount of time that only Allah knows the the actual. Uh, Time frame of it, yeah. Yeah, there's another verse that talks about uh, but they, they interpret that I mean the day of judgment, day of judgment, yeah. Yeah. There's a connection, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 we don't know, right? Allahu how, alam. How 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 the uh, how he created it? Uh, is the earth? You know, maybe the earth is actually the center of everything. You know, Allahu alam. Right? We don't we, we don't know uh, enough to be able to make any any you know definite statements. But of course, we believe what is in the Quran, right? Which is that Allah created it in six days or periods. We can say, uh, and the Christians and Jews have this, but the Christians and Jews, they're their interpretation, they can't interpret it uh, in the way that we interpret it. Because how it's mentioned in their books is actually uh, indicating that they're talking about the 24-hour days, the way it is presented in their books, which is also a clear, uh, clear proof that this, this is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they can't um, come up and defend their view with, in light of what you know, modern science says, like we can. We can, we can rationalize or we can uh, make it compatible to some degree. Right, to some degree, but they can't, because their what's mentioned in their books is, you know, it's uh, completely different. Even though they have this, they do say six as well. But of course, they, they also say that God rested in the seventh day as well. And we have mentioned before that when we talk about uh, in the verse Ayatul Kursi that that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, that He la, He does not uh, slumber nor sleep. Yeah, of course, I mean, that's why it's always important to have a, a foundation in your own beliefs. Right? Because some, lot, this happens a lot, right? Uh, people who are ignorant, Muslims, they don't know their religion, they don't know what their religion says, and they might go to these, um, take these classes, and because they don't know any better, they start to, you know, believe what's mentioned there, and use that as a means of rejecting Islam. So we have to always be careful, but the, the answer is always in knowledge and knowing, right? First, know our beliefs first, and then you know we can see what, what the scientists are saying and these other people are saying. Uh, we'll have to pause here because uh, actually it is uh, the adhan time. So we didn't finish the verses, but we'll continue with the verses uh, next week, uh, and also the the last uh, verses that we'll be covering as well is uh, verse of or Surah Al-Ikhlas, and that will be the the finale of the series of verses related to uh, descriptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll finish the remaining verse of Al-Hadid next week along with uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas to, to, to finish off uh, the series inshallah. Uh, but we'll wrap up with that today. Jazakumullah uh, khairun. Subhanakallah bihamdik. Nashadu la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka. We do have um, refreshments that will be coming up if they haven't come up yet. Uh, everyone is free to uh, take part in that. Uh, and Iqam will be at 7.50.